Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Road Reflection. <laughs> this is kind of take two. Uh, turned out my um, phone ran out of fucking space, but it ran out of space about a minute into the video, so I, I, I didn't lose a shit ton of content. It's just just talking about the check-in. I do want to do the check-in. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good mood, and I'm running a little late, so I don't want to spend too much time on the check-in today. Um, uh, and I know I tend to do that sometimes, and I, which I'm, I'm sorry about. I babble. Um, I just did Rompelcone show, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, it was a really good show. G- longer live stream to go, so you can go check that out. We get into a bunch of a uh, bunch of different topics, but it's just overall just a fun time. Uh, I like I like hanging out with Rob. I've known Rob for a long time, so it, it's always fun to 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 get a chance to. Uh, hang out and, and, and talk shop and bullshit about politics and stuff. So, um, But I want to get into this. Uh, I will not be doing a live stream on Friday. I will be doing a live stream on Thursday instead. The reason for that is because I'm, I'm going to the blood drive, donating some blood, and uh, finding out my blood type, actually. I don't know my blood type. So I'm going to do that. And then I got a doctor's appointment right after that. And uh, after that, I'm pretty much going to be laid out. I, I, I feel like I probably shouldn't overexert myself after donating blood. Um, so uh, I'm switching the live stream over to Thursday. Uh, and then uh, the live virtual stand-up comedy show is back for February 26th. That's right. We're back at it. It's going to be a, sh- a show via Zoom. Um, it's 10 bucks because it's once a month. And there's going to be a story from the road... So I'll do a little story up front, and then we'll get into the meat uh, of the discussion, which is which is what the forkful of noodles will be. Which, will, which you know, as as you guys know, if you pay attention to this channel regularly, is um, you know me taking a deep dive uh, on one particular topic uh, or one particular portion of history, and seeing how it applies today, um, and and kind of getting real deep into it, and you know, using jokes, using jokes to convey that sort of stuff. Using comedy as a way to open minds and educate people. Tickets for that are available on my website right now. Uh, go to krishmohanhaha.com. K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so go grab those tickets. If you are a sustaining member, uh, you get free tickets to that show. So don't buy tickets. Uh, hang tight. You'll get an email from me about uh, getting free tickets. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, so don't buy tickets if you're a sustaining member. If you want to be a sustaining member, you can also do that on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, also, you know, I am taking topic requests. So if you have a specific topic that you would like me to cover, either on Road Reflections or The Dispatch or... Um, or on the live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which end up becoming episodes of Forkful of Noodles, uh, please do send your topics my way, either via the comment section, message me on the on the Facebooks or the Twitters, uh, or you can email me. I will probably be setting up a new email because my, uh, my, my, my comedy email is filling up and I've been having some space issues with it. So, yeah, feel free to send me topics. Anyway, okay. We're going to dive into the stories. So let's get into it. Uh, Joe Biden's president, Joe Biden, uh, President old Joey, Joey B's, as I like, I like to call him Joey B's. Uh, the old Joey B's lying to us from even before, even before he got inaugurated. The man, I mean, this guy's a pro politician. You know, this guy is a fucking pro at being a politician where he was like, you know, a lot of people will, will say a bunch of shit on the campaign and then not deliver on them, uh, you know, until, until after they're inaugurated, maybe a year or two later. But this guy, he's like, nah, I gotta, I gotta get moving on these lies. Gotta rock and roll. I mean, people are waiting for me to lie to them to their face. Uh, (laughs) One big, well, you know, the, the I think the biggest one is is him saying that he's going to immediately approve the two thousand dollar checks, and now it's fourteen hundred dollars because oh, technicality, we already sent you six hundred, uh, so so you know, take it, peasants, 
Just take it and shut up. It's going to be 1400 You might get it in March. You might get it in April. Maybe you'll get it when Joe Biden is, uh, is no longer the president. Uh, and, and neoliberalism has worked its way all the way back around to neo-fascism. You don't know. So, uh, yeah. A- and uh, let's look at another lie that he has, per- uh, that he has uh, perpetrated. Um, put ground troops in Syria, you guys. It's an armored convoy. I, I, this is day one, by the way. You know how he always talks about, on day one... I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. I'm going to help out the black community by updating the crime bill to be more about crime. It's going to be a crimier bill. And I'll look at the black community and I'll say, this is a crimier bill so you can cry me a river about defunding the police. Boom. Joe Biden. Uh, no, he, he, said, he, said, he said fucking ground troops into, into Syria. Came in from the northeast, from Iraq. Uh, a bunch of armored vehicles. About two, I think two. Uh, the report I read said two hundred. I might be wrong. Um, it, it might be more than that. And by the way, you know, none of these wars have needed congressional approval. We haven't needed congressional approval to be in war until since World War Two, because uh, they're because diff- they're called occupations or, you know. Si- uh, uh, militaristic sit-ins or whatever like they're, they're they use all these different terms like no it's not a war come on we're we're just hanging out with guns this is just bro we're just broing down with guns this is a gun bro down so when he was inaugurated the day he was inaugurated the Syrian ambassadors the Syrian ambassador that basically came out and said, hey, uh, withdraw your troops from our country and stop stealing our oil. Like straight up blatantly said that you're stealing our oil, you're, you're wrecking our resources, um, and we would like it if you would stop doing that and, you know, fucking leave. Get out of here. We don't, we don't want to see you here. And what does Joe Biden do but send in more troops? <laughs> Which is antithetical to what he said back in September 2020 when he said that withdrawing troops is the right thing to do in Syria right now. Drawing down troops, I believe, is, is, is how he put it. Drawing down troops. We got we to gotta reduce the number of troops in Syria. That's the right move. And what does he do but increase the number of troops? Uh, and not only that, but, you know, because of this, um, there's been a bombing from, from uh, the Israelis that has killed four Syrians, which includes two children. Regardless of what you say about Syria and other Syrians, um, the civilian casualties of war is inexcusable. Especially for a country that has such an amazing, incredible military and you know, we sell our weapons to the Israelis and, 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 and the Iranians and, and or maybe not the Iranians, but the Iraqis. And, you know, our weapons are global. We got a global weapons manufacturing uh, wing here. There's nothing you can just like there's no justification for what happened other other than you killed kids like that's it. That's that's where it ends. Here's what I think should happen is if you are if you're a country that perpetrates war on an, another country then and you're not going to, you know, you're you're you know there's going to be civilian casualties, which they do. They fucking know. There's no way that they don't. If that's what's going to happen, then you need to have a, a refugee policy. And other countries around the world have to approve you invade you being an invading force. And those countries have to agree to be like, okay, we'll back you up in the war, but you, but okay, and this is how much refugees we're willing to take from the war. But it starts with you. the The first round of refugees comes to the country that wants to engage in that war. So in this situation, it would be it would be America. 
How many people would go to war if that's the case? As nationalistic as America is, how many people would go to war if, if they knew the, what the civilian, uh, the, the civilian cost of war actually was and what that would mean for America? Obviously, I think there shouldn't be war. I'm one of those crazy people that's like, hey, war destroys not just human lives, but also the planet. It's all around the worst thing we've done as human beings. All around the worst thing we've done. And here we are, Joe Biden going back to basics. Because again, Obama was the one that started the war in Syria. He's the one that engaged America in the war in Syria. Oh, it's a terror threat of ISIL. Well, how did ISIL get created? Oh, was it a bunch of disillusioned Iraqi soldiers that felt like they didn't have a fucking place in their society after the war on terror fucking failed? Oh, and how did how did that attack happen? Oh, was it because you created Al-Qaeda? Because you disillusioned a bunch of Afghani- Afghanis? By training them, giving them weapons to fight against the communist threat, and then you fucking bailed on them? Oh, is that what... Is that... Okay, so basically these wars are uh, revising history and covering up your own mess. Oh, that's why all those people are dying. Oh, and you're trying to steal oil from these countries. That too... Oh, that must be it. Last year, uh, I wrote a, a, a fork full of noodles, a two-part about why people should be anti-war, um, and none of that has changed. The reason I wrote that piece to begin with is because last year, at the very beginning of last year, Trump assassinated uh, General Qasem Soleimani, who was on a peace mission in Iraq. So he opened fire. In, 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 in this blatant attempt to start a hot war with Iran, which America would lose because the Quds Force, which is who Soleimani controlled, uh, has defeated American troops before. When American troops backed Saddam Hussein. Again, you know, history gets revised and forgotten. And people fall in, into propaganda because that's how, the, that's how the media is used in our society. It's, it's a domino effect. It's a daisy chain. That's how history works. One thing leads to another. And all, I mean, and this is really just Biden going back to basics. He's going back to Obama era stuff where it's like, okay, ground troops in, in Syria, I guess. I guess. I guess we're ramping up war in Syria. Over what? Is there a threat to national security? Did, did Syria cause the capital insurrection? Now, Biden's also said he, he's, he, you know, in terms of the, the Middle East, he's also said that he's going to uh, support the Yemenis. I don't, I don't know if that'll happen. Because then you'd have to go up against Saudi Arabia and America so buddy-buddy with Saudi Arabia. My guess is things are going to ramp up. He might he might make a you know some statement that he's for oh the the poor Yemeni people suffering and then he'll you know sell weapons to Saudi Arabia or you know, send them troops do some mental gymnastics to justify it. Day one, day one, he ramps up war in Syria. Boy, if that's what he's going to do on day one, I wonder what day 100 is going to look like for that country. You know? What he could have done instead on day one... uh, is gotten Congress together to say, hey, let's send out those $2,000 checks. Let's get an individual bill going to send all Americans with the Social Security using census data to send Americans $2,000 checks. And let's do it 
by the beginning of February so that people can pay their rent if they need to and their bills. You know what else he could have done on day one? Use uh, use an executive order to get everybody health care. You can go to section 1881A. You could have done that. Instead, he was like, nah, I'm going to send ground troops into Syria. That's what he's going to do. Let's look at more foreign policy disasters from uh, the Biden administration, day six or whatever it is. Uh, uh, He's already endorsed Juan Guaido of Venezuela. Who's Juan Guaido? If you missed my video last week and and all of the other videos and podcasts I've done um, in regards to Venezuela, Juan Guaido is the fake president that America has endorsed, the Trump administration endorsed, Uh, that there's a bipartisan endorsement of. And Joe Biden just agreed to endorse him. And not just agreed, he, he did endorse him. Now, a bunch of the world, I mean, a majority of the world, does not see Juan Guaido as the rightful leader of Venezuela. They, they look at Nicolas Maduro and they say, well, yeah, they had a legitimate election and Nicolas Maduro won and Nicolas Maduro does not want to give America a bunch of oil because yeah he was he's he's from uh you know the same line of thinking as Chavez who America also hated um regardless of what you think of Venezuela to to dictate who is and isn't the leader of a foreign country is not America's place and vice versa, right? That's that's the argument. That's what Russiagate was all about. Oh my God, a foreign country is is put you know put a, a leader in place. That's what that Russiagate conspiracy theory was all about. So if that is an outrage, then the liberals should be outraged by what Joe Biden is doing right now with Venezuela. He's supporting a coup. And he's showing the world that he's pro coup right he goes on television and he, and he and he reams out the 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 uh storming of the capital right the 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 coup that happened at the capital on January 6th but he supports the coup of Venezuela huh are you pro coup or anti coup oh are you are you just anti coup when it happens to 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 monoliths of american oligarchy oh okay 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 i see America first, right? America first. It's such a... This hypocrisy is such a blatant disrespect to the people of Venezuela. Blatantly disrespecting them. Again, this is a this is a bipartisan effort. This is something that Trump also did. So he is he is you know supporting a um, a Trumpian philosophy, if you will. Uh, Trump supported the and then so did Pelosi. I mean, she fucking sprung up out of her chair when Trump introduced her at the introduced Juan Guaido at the State of the Union address. It was, it was so gross. <laughs> So great. I think, you know those cartoons where uh, the ejector button is like a spring that launches people out of the seat through the roof of whatever vehicle or whatever? Like, I think Nancy Pelosi wishes that she had that uh, when, when Guan Guaido's name was said because she shot up out of the chair so quickly. Like, it was like she was like she hit the ejector button. And what she was hoping would happen is that she would get launched up onto the thing. And he could, and she would just fall into his arms and and uh, just you know make out with him. The Secretary of State uh, Blinken, Anthony Blinken, uh, is uh, 
Biden's Secretary of State now, he has basically said that he's going to ramp up economic warfare. I'm sorry, economic sanctions, which is economic warfare, uh, on Venezuela. What did he say? He said more, more effective, more effective sanctions will be placed on Venezuela. Because here's the thing: even though there's sanctions on them, he's still been able to get like food and health care and and canceling rents. Uh, for his people during a pandemic. And that is, it's making America look bad. Okay. America is looking bad. We're supposed to be the greatest country in the world. And by, by doing, by, by being the greatest country in the world, we set the example. So other countries can't do things that are better than America can. And America treats its working class like dog shit. Uh, and when other countries don't treat the working class like dog shit, it makes America look bad. And henceforth, they have to put quote unquote, more effective sanctions on them. Uh, that forces these countries uh, to treat their uh, working class uh, like dog shit. And that's what Anthony Blinken wants to do. Oh, is this what empathy looks like? Cutting off uh, social programs in other countries that help people get food, that help people um, have a roof over their head and get health care? Is this what, getting rid of all those things, that's what empathy looks like, according to the Democratic Party, huh? Oh, man. Boy, I'm, I, I had it all wrong. I thought you were supposed to care about everybody and listen to people's perspectives and try to understand where they're coming from. You know? Put yourself in their shoes. Oh, but you're only supposed to do that for people that uh, believe the exact same things you do. I'm sorry, I forgot. Selective empathy is what the Democratic Party believes in. If you're, if you're a pro-Democrat, then yeah, yeah, yeah. We got all the empathy in the world for you. Oh, you're not a Democrat? Then fuck you. You deserve everything awful that's ever happened to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. The vitriol that, 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 that exists within this party is shown both domestically and foreign. Now, if you'll remember, there was, uh, they... Venezuela has had American economic warfare thrust upon it since 2019, at least, minimum. Uh, They basically uh, put sanctions on them so they wouldn't be able to get the income that they are owed through, uh, through their oil sales, through Citgo. So billions got locked away. Um, And not only that, um, but they also um, various various international shipping companies were blacklisted. That was the word I was looking for in my notes. They were blacklisted from uh, you know from from participating in trade because they support Venezuela. Because they were like, yeah, we're still gonna get them their fucking oil. We're still gonna transport it around. Could you imagine? This happening in any sort of American corporation, right? Like, uh, for example, like, what if, um, what if the world said, okay, until you pull your troops out of Syria and uh, stop stealing their oil, we're gonna we're we're gonna put sanctions on America uh, and not not you know not let um, Exxon or 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 BP or Shell get their uh, get their profits. We're going to lock them up. The difference is um, Venezuela ha- is more nationalized in that terms, uh, and America is not. It's a private private corporation, right? So, I think that. But there would still be an up- uproar if they were, if you know, across the across the world, there's a bunch of people that were like, "Yeah, we're not shipping this oil. We're not supporting it. We're and we're not giving you the revenue that you guys have earned." Uh, those are all going to get locked up. Uh, people would freak the fuck out. They would lose their fucking minds. Oh, how dare you? Uh, you, you, you can't do this to America. That's, yeah, but you can do it to Venezuela. So there, again, hypocrisy. Now, what's happening with these sanctions is, is something called collective punishment, right? By having legitimate elections and voting for a socialist that's going to help out the populace, as Maduro does, 
America puts economic sanctions to collectively punish its people for supporting a candidate and, and a president that it doesn't believe people should be supporting. Again, who is America to dictate what Ven- who Venezuelans should support? And Maduro is, is now suing America over these sanctions um, as, as crimes against humanity He's the, uh, in the International Criminal Court. We'll see where that goes. I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, absolutely. At least make a statement by, by bringing up this lawsuit to, to show that America shouldn't be controlling uh, the uh, economics and the politics and the leadership of another country. And this is something Joe Biden supports. Again, same thing with sanctions in Iran, right? They can't get medical supplies that they need during a pandemic. The only way Joe Biden is going to allow them to do that is if they sign the, the, the nuclear deal. Which, fine, yeah, but why is that the caveat for getting people medicine and care that they need during a global pandemic? That should not be a requirement. You should not bend your knee to America's will in order to be able to save your people from a global pandemic. It's a hostage situation. That's uh, Joe Biden's foreign policy is a hostage situation. We're going to hold the citizens of other countries hostage by putting economic sanctions on them and ensuring that they can't get their basic needs. Kind of what we do in America with uh, with health insurance and people in food lines. Now, here's the thing, right? Nicolas Maduro, when Biden was inaugurated, or right before he was going to be inaugurated, um, did come out and say, hey, look, we didn't have a good relationship with the Trump administration. For the last year and a half, they've been uh, pummeling us. Mike Pompeo wants to destroy Venezuela. John Bolton said it was part of a troika of tyranny or whatever kitschy fucking name they need to come up with to uh, manufacture consent for, for whatever kind of war that they want to wage on these countries. But maybe Joe Biden, because the way the Democrats are advertising him to be this this president of empathy and he's going to be a, uh, the great uniter and he's going to bring everybody together. And what a wonderful guy Joe is. Well, fine. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show good faith. And Maduro said, I hope that we can work uh, on some of the differences diplomatically. And here we are where Joe Biden is endorsing Guan Guaido. Uh, who was the same person that Trump endorsed, who is the fake president of the country. (laughs) It's comical. Like, how do people not make these connections, right? It's by defaming people like myself and Lee Camp and Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Eleanor Goldfield... Uh, Aaron Mate, Anya Parmpil. I mean, the list keeps going on and on of people that cover this stuff and expose these politicians for what they are and who they are, and and their and and their diehards, their sycophants, will trash you and discredit you and say you're you're a Trump supporter or or you don't know anything about government, you don't know how this stuff works. And it's like, yeah, I don't think you do either because you're supporting a coup, and then you hypocritically. Um, you know, uh, disavowed a, a different coup. Or like, so why why do you have this selective preference for coups? Why are you supporting an organization like the CIA, which is pro coup, when their motto is to cheat, lie, and deceive? That's their motto. All right, uh, I got one more story for you. This is, I know this is going to be a little bit of a short one, I think. Um, if we have a little bit of time, I might do. I, I might talk about uh, just Twitter feud bullshit just to get some catharsis out of it. But um, I want to talk about COVID responses. There, there's a couple countries that that did okay, and there are a couple countries that were dog shit and they paid for it by being dog shit 
um, and their leadership is, is has has a very uh, clear uh, similarity, and that is that they are a bunch of capitalist neoliberal governments. Uh, so let's start with Brazil. What's going on in Brazil? Uh, well, Brazil has a, has a legitimate authoritarian as a as a as a president. Uh, his name is Jair Bolsonaro. Uh, he is a uh, he's a he's a terrible person. He you know was fine with the rainforest burning down, uh, lied to ranchers about getting land there and shit like that. Um, he's a legitimate authoritarian. He wants to go back to having a military rule in Brazil. He basically didn't take this pandemic seriously. He didn't really do any sort of like stay at home order or lockdown measures or any of that sort of stuff. Um, didn't provide his uh, populace with any sort of a financial incentive to to stay locked down. Just just was kind of a dick about it, and uh, and now hospitals are overrun, and they are running out of oxygen. That's what they're saying. They're running out of oxygen. Right. Uh, Why? Because they chose profit over people. Because he wanted to keep the economy open and make sure that banks were running properly. Uh, You could have very easily done that by, you know, locking things down, going into delivery only for restaurants and small businesses and things of that sort, and then giving them money to make sure that they don't collapse to make sure that people don't go bankrupt and get evicted and wind up homeless. America is approaching Brazil. America might become the new Brazil. Because hospitals here are getting overrun because of the COVID variant and and the uh, politicization of, of wearing a mask. Uh, You know, and and people just being generally irresponsible. I mean, fuck for fuck's sake! I saw people celebrating when Biden was elected, unmasked in the streets of D.C. Every time there was a Trump rally, I was like, "Great, COVID spikes! Here we go." But what did the debate in America yield? Very similar to what the debate in Brazil, I'm sure, yielded which is public health versus the economy. Not public health and the economy. Could You can both have a, a, a decent thriving economy. It won't be like the greatest, but it'll still be okay. People won't be destitute. There won't be, you know, uh, miles and miles long of food lines everywhere. But people won't be destitute. They'll have something. There's no UBI, no healthcare plan, none of that sort of stuff. Uh, it was lockdown measures. Everybody stay inside, which of course ramped up, you know, more hypochondriac kind of paranoia. Um, and I'm not saying that this virus isn't serious; it very much is. But let's be reasonable about this. It's not like if you step outside and take a deep breath, you're gonna die. Obviously, don't go into an enclosed location with a lot of different people without wearing a mask during a, 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 a pandemic, but, you know. So they kind of perpetuated the civil unrest by uh, not giving people a UBI, not giving people a financial incentive to, uh, to stay away from work, uh, because capitalism thrives on that. It thrives on, on, on labor, and so people needed to go to work. So even if they got sick, they were going to work. Which in a pandemic is a fucking bad idea. And then the Democrats scrambled, right? Because they were like, hey, you got to wear a mask. Do it for your countrymen. Do it for your fellow citizens. Do it for grandma. And they scrambled to get this collective message out there of like, oh, let's get through this together. When all they've preached is neoliberal individualism. It's that 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 it's you first, yeah. Like that's what they've preached for for fucking forty years, fifty years. And then they gotta go. No, 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 no. That's not how we're living our lives anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, but you fucking beat it into people's brains. That's what they know. You can't just undo your propaganda in the matter of a day because you know that's not how that works. You've systematically created a system 
that are, are systematically created a culture, sorry, that is rooted to collapse itself during something like a pandemic. Now, of course, Biden is saying that he's not going to shut down the economy. He is going to shut down the virus. How are you going to do that? You're going to shut down. That's a nice little kitschy phrase you can say, but how the fuck are you actually going to do that? So he said national mask mandate. Everybody will be required to wear a mask when they go into into buildings. It turned out to be a, a federal ma- national mask mandate, uh, which is not what he specified it would be. He very much, he very much pitched it like it was going to be a... Federal, like a nationalized mask mandate. Like everybody's going to be wearing a mask. They're going to be required by law to wear one. That's how he presented it. So it's not, this is not me making an argument of, yeah, we need to make a law that says masks are a requirement during this pandemic and blah, blah, blah. Like that's, I'm, I'm pointing out the hypocrisy of what he says. And I'm pointing out the technicality that he's going to get it on. He's going to present it one way and then do it in a different way. That's what I'm pointing out. How the fuck is he going to shut down this virus? I have no fucking clue. But he says shit like, shut down the virus. Shut down the virus. We're going to cancel the virus. Maybe you could tell people that they need to stay at home. Limit, federally fucking limit how many people can be gathered uh, in an indoor dining location or an entertainment venue. Uh, and, you know, um, have them make sure that people are wearing masks and offer people masks. And... I don't know, offer people a UBI so that they will actually stay home and they can actually stimulate the economy instead of fucking bailing out Wall Street over and over again. Could be something to do. But they didn't. And he's he's barely giving us $2,000. That's still an argument right now, whether that's going to happen or not. Now, Sweden tried um, herd immunity, and that didn't work out. Uh, So, again, these are all all countries that practice neoliberalism and and focused on how do we, you know, get the economy going. Let's choose the economy over public health instead of figuring out how to incorporate the economy and keep the, keep, uh, the public safe and healthy. Neoliberalism pit health and the economy, and it made everything worse. Uh, definitely having a UBI in healthcare during this time would have decreased the amount of uh, unrest we saw, it would decrease the amount of arguments that were happening. That hyper politicization of, 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 of masks and, you know, uh, things like that. Businesses wouldn't be suing the government saying that these measures are unconstitutional, which happened in Pennsylvania. Now, there, there's a call for a lawsuit against Bolsonaro in the ICC uh, for choosing, you know, basically the corporate donors to make sure that corporations are going to be uh, fined during this pandemic over his people. And the article I read was from Vijay Prashad, Vijay Prasad and Noam Chomsky, uh, who called for a citizen tribunal against these neoliberals. Uh, I'm all for that. That sounds awesome. I, I hope we figure out a way to do that. I think I think that it should be... Uh, there should be a citizen oversight committee in, in every legal case. Um, that, that, that should be a necessity. I think the, the public should determine, you know what happens to some of these people what happens in instances like this a leader like Bolsonaro should go to prison for what he did he should be uh, you know taken out of office Uh, I would love to know the details of a citizen tribunal but it sounds like a great idea to me Uh, but the point of this is you know neoliberalism which people like Jair Bolsonaro Joe Biden Donald Trump Nancy Pelosi Mitch McConnell Chuck Schumer uh, Boris Johnson, they all practice. And it has not worked. It has failed us miserably, and it's time to implement a new system. 
That's what we need. We need a whole fucking new system. A little bit of a short uh, show today, um, but uh, you guys know the drill. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure you make sure you are subscribed. Follow me on Rockfin if you're if you're not a fan of the censorship uh, on on the YouTube's and the Facebooks, and and you're an avid viewer of uh, content creators like myself and Lee Camp, Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson, uh, Whitney Webb, Steve Poinkin, and Action for Assange. Uh, the list goes on. There's a ton of people on Rockfin. Uh, you can find my channel, subscribe and endorse it at rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Become a sustaining member if you're on fin- stable financial ground. Make a one-time donation. Uh, download any of my albums. Listen to it for free if you would like to. Um, check out past videos. Sign up for my email list. Um, and so tons of tons of stuff to do on my website there. Uh, and uh, yeah. I think that's it for today. Uh, Remember, there's no live stream on Friday, but I will have a live stream uh, on Thursday. Um, So keep uh, stay tuned, keep up to date, and thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. I love you guys.